Hello, I'm going to cover the various Infragistics editor controls in this video, so I have a bunch of them on the form ready to go. Um, I'm also going to cover the Ultra Label control and our Ultra Button. So these are basically the controls that are used very frequently but not talked about that much because people think, hey, it's just a label or hey, it's just a button. So I just want to make sure that I cover these and so you guys know that we have these controls. I'm also not going to cover the Win Formatted Text Editor. That exists all in a video on its own, so you can check that video out as well. These have a lot of common functionality, so I figured I'd batch them all together. So in the NetAdvantage Windows Forms toolbox, you're going to find all of these editors. This is basically called the Font Name Editor. This is the Mask Editor, where it's used for specifying a type of string that represents possible characters and values that can be entered. Uh, this is also the numeric editor when you want to work with numbers. This essentially is a color picker that gives you a drop down with the ability to pick colors. This is a currency editor, very similar to the numeric editor, but the numbers in this represent currency or money, so it's all designed to work with that. This is a daytime editor. Uh, this is a regular text editor, but it's made by Infragistics. And then we have the option set and the check editor as well. So let's go through these guys. So this is the font name editor. Um, and some of the things that I want to talk about that are actually common to all these text box based or combo based editors is a very powerful feature that I've used many times throughout the years is the buttons collection. So let's say if I were to click on this editor over here, I can look at the buttons left or buttons right property. So this essentially allows me to add a bunch of buttons to the left side or to the right side. So let's say if I wanted to add a bunch of buttons to the right hand side, I can just click on the little button there to launch the collection editor because it's essentially it's a collection. And this is very powerful once you see how this works. I could add many types of buttons. I could add an editor button. Let's just add a bunch of them. I could add a drop down editor button. I could add an auto repeat editor button, a spin editor button, or a state editor button. These are just randomly added in. Uh, each one of these should be set up. So this is just a plain old editor button. So let's put I don't know, just an X in there just so you see that one. A drop down editor button gets hooked up with a control. So let's say if I were to just click OK for now and OK, which control could I grab just for now? OK, my favorite control to use for hooking up stuff is the gauge. So let me just throw this on there real quick and choose a very simple preset. As you see, the buttons have been rendered already within the actual um, control. So that's a very powerful feature because you could come up with a regular editor control and then when you start adding these capabilities, you have a very powerful editor that has a bunch of other buttons. Let's just grab any old preset for now, that's fine. So having this ability really supercharges your app. So I'm going to move the gauge out of the way because it doesn't really I don't really want to show it right now. So jump back to the buttons right collection and launch the editor and now the drop down editor button the property hook it up to a control when when you click on the drop down notice that all the controls on the form are game for this. So I'm going to hook it up to the ultra gauge and whoops, come back here and Let's say I wanted to put some text in there, let's say Y, and again, just throwing values in there. There's different types of button styles like soft button, pop up, or button 3D. So these are a bunch of properties that you can explore and you know have lots of granularity over the control of this. So let's see the auto repeat button. So you know you have this one here, spin editor button. So spin editor button and state editor button where it's basically a state where it stays pressed or not. So Let's take a look at this and run it. So here's the regular button that I click on, and when I click on the drop down, I get the essentially I get the gauge control that pops up here. So again, I have the ability to hook up any control that I want in here. Um, then the spin button will spin up and down. But here's the thing, here's a trick. On these buttons, you basically have to write some code to do something. Then I have this guy right here. So that's basically what that's basically what this is here. That, that these are all the buttons and what they're able to do. But now again, another part of the puzzle that I need to show you is how to work with these. So I'm going to click on the events right here, and what you want to handle is 
there's a couple of events related to this. So you can handle the before editor button check state change for the check ones if you want to execute some logic before the check changes. Before the editor button drop down event is another useful one for the one that pops up my gauge. I could handle that and do something to the control before it pops up. Preferably you want to set up and initialize the control that's about to be shown in this event. Like for example, grab the value that's in the text box and populate your control, whatever it is, or do something to it. And then it automatically shows up correctly. And then the other one is you're going to have, to have the after events as well. After editor button check state change and after editor button close up. And actually after the editor button collapses back up you may want to take that and maybe do something with the text box or something in the back end or you know after the end user has made a change of some kind. That's what that's good for. And now those are the events that happen before and after but what you also want to do is you also want to handle the editor button click editor spin button click and basically these events allow you to handle you know the clicking of that so what you want to do is let's say if I added that event handler you want to look at the e dot button dot key that's what I usually do and then do like a switch case statement on this and you want to set the key property if you have a bunch of buttons if you have only one button and you know you'll never add another one you can get away with not checking this property but I recommend that it's best practice to add a key property like for example you know, you know each button has a purpose come up with a string which represents the key a unique value that will allow you to identify what button was clicked so you could execute the appropriate logic alright so let's take a look at the other property of this type of control here the input mask is an important property Infragistics gives you a bunch of presets that you can set right here um, and you can just type them in or you can select from one of these here essentially I can actually just instead of typing in I'll just select social security so an input mask essentially is a string that you type that consists of mask characters which get interpreted and treat your input a certain way like I know this mask contains these pound signs which represent required num numerics these little dash symbols represent literals it's just a dash in the formatted you know, in the formatted um, input. So that's what you can use to come up with an editor that doesn't allow junk to be entered. Because without this, you'd have to get a regular text box and do work and stop garbage from being entered and do validation of some kind. So that's basically how that works, and it's very easy to use this. So if I run this again, let's take a look at how this behaves now. So I have my mask editor, so I'm going to start typing in letters. Notice how it's beeping at me, it will not let me enter garbage letters. I'll have to enter numerics. And notice that once the mask is fulfilled and all the possible values are entered, or the places are filled, I can't enter anymore. So that's really awesome because I just throw this control on there, set a mask, and I'm good to go. Then just get the value property and then you're done. And let, while I'm at it, let's also take a look at the font editor. So the font name editor, I could just click it and this control is great also because you just throw it onto the form as I did before and it automatically gets populated with all the available fonts that are on your system so and then when you click on one of these guys and you select a value then you just grab the font property and then you're done then you could do whatever you want with that useful if you're creating some kind of system where you need to allow your end users to select fonts and let's take a look at the numeric editor. The numeric editor is very similar to the currency editor because they both work with numbers. Just one takes numbers and the other one works with numbers that are designed to be currency. So you can set a min value and a max value. So when you set these values, it allows, let's say if I set a min value of 10 and let's say max value of 1000. That's another good thing about our editors where working with numerics, you could have a min value and a max value. And then the numeric type, another important thing, you want integer, double, or decimal. So that's another thing that you can set. Nullable, if it's false, it cannot be left null. It'll, it'll basically you know, get filled in with a zero or let's see what it does when I give it a min value. So right now it's zero, so okay, that's, that's what it's going to basically be. But, when it, but notice how actually 
I can't move off of it and go somewhere else. It's going to force me in there and keep me in there until I put at least 10. And now it's happy, so I can move off freely. So you could do that. So let's say if I try to put like 1 and move off, it's not happy, so it will not, it will not let me leave that 10. I'm going to show you something cool that we can do after this, but again, this is just very basic. You could also set up notifications. Um, you know, you could provide validation and notifications in many different ways with other Infragistics controls, but the raw numeric editor, is that's how it works. So, I mean, from a raw standpoint where you're worried about getting garbage into your back end, um, you could definitely use this control. You could also set the min-max values programmatically based on other conditions as well. Let's take a look at the currency editor. So, very similar to that, we want to set some properties on here. Buttons left and right, as I said before, in the other in, in all of these controls. Um, one of the cool things you could set up on these other controls is the prompt character. So, what you can do is the prompt character represents the placeholder for all the places or for all the possible characters that can be entered into the editor. So, you could change this, but typically it's set up as an underscore which end users see that and they'll know that that's the place where they can enter a value. So you could set up a format provider here as far as how you want it to be formatted. So you select any one of these. So the currency editor will automatically pick up the culture of whatever it is the app is running on. So whatever the .NET culture that is returned from the app's process is what it automatically picks up. You can also programmatically switch that to another culture if you like directly on the control itself. And so the Ultra Date Time Editor is another control that we have here. Then this one allows you to pretty much, you know, pick dates. You know, you want to give your end user the ability to set, you know, pick, you know, pick a date value from this drop down. And you can also do max date and min date. Pretty much like min value and max value on these other controls. Here you have min date and max date. So it's great if you use that one. So you're able to provide some filtering or anti-garbage logic without even having to write any code, just set a property and you're done. Um, again, you could set up to be nullable. Another thing that's common across these editor controls is what do you want to show when it's null? Like for example, if I say if I go to this one right here and the nullable is true, what do you want to say when it's null? You could do something like this or you know, or please enter a value or something or Or any, anything like that that's essentially written into the control and that way you don't have to worry about it so it's like a separate text that doesn't get treated as data input then we have the option set so the first thing we want to start off in the option set is the items so we click on that we can add a bunch of items and then essentially we give it display text and a data value so that's how it, you can do it that way. So you give it a user-friendly display text, and then you want to give it a key. But again, you could you could uh, do this programmatically if you want. Let's like, say if you want to have like a lookup table somewhere in the back end where you have a list of items that is used to populate this list. You can definitely do that as well. So you give it a user-friendly name, and then some display. Uh, then you give it a key. Pretty much like a drop-down combo box, this would be the alternative. The only difference is that a like a list of items like this will pretty much take up more real estate on the UI, whereas a drop-down, as you know, is collapsible and it only takes up real estate of whatever it is when it's collapsed. Then the check editor control is how you'd expect a check editor, where it's checked or not checked, so it's true or false. Then there's checked state, where if you want to do um, try state, it's unchecked, checked, and indeterminate, where indeterminate you can treat it as null. And tr three state is what you want to do. So true when you go when you set the three state property to true, then you're going to look at the checked state property, where it's one of these three guys, rather than it's just checked, true, false. And last but not least, the text editor. So the text editor, pretty much just like the, edit the other editors, but it's a plain old text box. You could put whatever you want in there. Um, you know, the no, there's no mask. Um, there's no, you know, no min value, no max value like the other guys here. But it does have the buttons left and right collection where if you just want a plain old text editor where you could enter whatever you want, that's the one you want to use. But again, I always recommend that you identify the various types of 
data that you expect to input from your end users and then you choose the appropriate editor that way it'll save you a lot of time in writing code and setting up logic to stop garbage from being entered and use these controls whenever you can I know they've helped me out throughout the years and then finally we have the ultra label where it's just your typical label control but it's in for just the size it's built on the PLF you could set appearances on that you could hook it up with app stylist and it will style this across the entire application so if you consistently use these controls and again the, the ultra label control being one of the net advantage when forms controls throughout your app then you'll have the ability to hook into this with app stylist and same thing goes for the button the infragistics ultra button control this is again a PLF based control which when you have this consistently across your apps and you flip around through different themes then you don't have to worry about going and restyling everything so the biggest thing I want to tell everyone out there is why use the button control or, or other controls like the label control or ones that we may think are just smaller and you know you, you concentrate mostly on the grid well again it goes down to the appearance objects the PLF the extensibility mechanism and because it's an infragistics control it taps into app stylus so whenever you change your theme these controls pick it up as well and your whole app gets redone really quickly and you know looks great with just swapping the theme out so now you know how to use these various controls and they're at your disposal and just make sure that you select the right controls for the right type of data to give your end users the best user experience and to reduce the amount of work that you have to do here Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com